Hello everyone and welcome. I'm here today with St. Paul School from Covington, Louisiana, and they're here to talk about their car, which is the urban concept vehicle, uh, more of a road-going car than the prototype vehicles here at the Shell Eco Marathon. So let's talk about the car a little bit. What things were done to maximize fuel efficiency? Well, a lot of, the, of what you get fuel, uh, fuel efficiency from is you want to make it as lightweight as possible. Sure. And you want to reduce rolling resistance because when, you're, when you have your foot off the uh, pedal, you're burning a lot less fuel than when you're obviously flooring it. So a lot of it is focused on your bearings and your wheels, especially your brakes, because if the brakes are off-center just a little bit, it can re uh, rub and drag along the, uh, the brake pad, like the brake pad, and it'll slow you down tremendously and burn a lot of fuel. So what size engine do we have in here, and what type of fuel are you guys using? We have a uh, 6.5 horsepower diesel engine that we um, we're running diesel for for the event. We usually run biodiesel, but they actually cut the um, cut the category, so we're just straight diesel. Uh, we prefer diesel by far because it's a lot simpler than uh, both gas and battery cars. Because battery, they added a new uh, law this year that you have to build your own controller, and we tried that, and it didn't work so well. So the name of the vehicle kind of fitting for the diesel, uh, Raiders of the Lost Spark, Indiana Jones-inspired vehicle, and hence diesel, Lost Spark. So yeah, no spark plug. How much does this engine weigh, and how much does the overall vehicle weigh? The engine is about 72, 75 pounds. Uh, the entire car weighed in in tech inspection at 430. OK. So, And where is that in relation to like the minimum or maximum weight? The minimum is 450. Well, that's 450, uh, one pa 451 pounds. So can we talk about some of the material selection, what was done to keep that weight down? Definitely. Um, this entire back is basically, for strength and structural purpose, uh, electric conduit piping with some angle iron at the bottom to keep it okay. from bending. Last year we had a big problem where our, our back end was starting to bend as the race went on just because of all the vibration. Okay. So we, we went ahead with some, some angle iron to keep it stability. Um, and just plywood, plywood, fairly light, fairly lightweight. And if you move to the front, um, most of this generally is Lexan, painted Lexan. Okay. Very lightweight plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our wheel wells are actually fiberglass. All four of them are made awesome. of fiberglass uh, molds. So everything's fairly lightweight. It's better than using all aluminum or all like really heavy metals. So I noticed this fuel tank's pretty small. What size is that? And is that basically a regulation, or do you guys get yes, to choose? Yes, uh, Shell provides all of us with um, the, the tank that we need. Actually, okay. we have to buy them. That is the biggest tank they make. It's a 350 milliliter, and okay. it's just because this diesel engine does suck up more gas than um, so so many others. There's not. There's not many things you can do to tweak the diesel engine because there's no carburetor, there's no things that you right. can just kind of fine tune. It's really, it's really all about uh, the weight, the rolling resistance, and the driving. So I know you wanted to mention something about the seats inside. As you can see, and it's been a little ripped up because we've been getting in and out, uh, so we've had wrenches puncture it and all, but this is what's called kombucha. And you can basically refer to it as a vegan leather. It's a leather that's grown from a uh, from a bacteria. You throw Interesting. you throw yeast, water, and sugar into a uh, into a vat, a vat, and you throw this microbiotic. Uh, it's growing some right here. Exactly. We have some right here if you want like to look at it. You throw this bacterial uh, <laughs> pad basically in it, and it eats the alcohol that the yeast produces. And if you can smell that, it, it doesn't smell too great, but. Once, you, once it's thick enough, you can take it out and dry it off after several days and have a, a very thin sheet of kombucha. And this is our Mark II experiment, and you can feel that, how brittle it is. Yeah, it's very actually, thin. It's not very good for making seats. But what we found is that if you don't let it dry completely and you soak it with glycerin, you paint it all with glycerin, it locks in a lot of moisture that allows it to become this flexible. Oh, wow. Yeah, huge feel difference. That. Yep. Now it feels a little sticky because we, we also put uh, we went a step further and we coated it with uh, a little paraffin, a little melted paraffin okay. that allows it to be waterproof. So we lock the water in and now we're keeping the water out. And it's keeping it a little waxy still, but it makes for a much better seat cover. Interesting. Much stronger. Do you know what uh, kind of mile per gallon you're targeting on, on reaching or is this kind of an unknown still? So, so last point? year 
we haven't had a run because we, we kind of ran into some speed bumps in tech inspection. Luckily, we just came back from tech inspection and we got our stickers. Awesome, so um, fast. Exactly. Last year, we had a lot of mystery drag, and we think it was from the brakes, um, okay. and it really hurt us. And we got about 98 miles per gallon. We're at, we, we think we have the brakes figured out this year, and we're hoping to get about 200. Awesome. That's Very our cool. goal. A little bit better than my Subaru gets. <laughs> A little bit. Now, now, as far as the driving, what's your strategy out there to minimize fuel consumption? Well, the first off, you always want to get a base run. Uh, you don't want to try, be trying to do this hypermiling and all these fancy tricks and then keep coming in late mm -hmm. because you wanted a valid run. Right. Go home without a valid run. Would be so what, what do you, what's an invalid run and what is coming in late? An invalid run, um, for an urban concept, you have to make it within a certain time limit. Okay. Both, actually, both uh, sets of cars do. And I believe for the urban concept, you have to do the six mile course, 0.6 miles, 10 times, sure. um, in 24 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay. So you want to come in that time or below. Any little time over is causes an invalid run. Okay. Invalid so run. do you have the engine running for all 10 of those laps, or do you come up to a certain speed, cut it? Ah, that's called hypermiling, and we do plan to do that. Uh, so what you want to do is normally you want to get it up to a nice, nice coasting speed, usually around 18. Okay. Uh, and if you can kill the motor and roll for a good good uh, amount of, uh, of track, you're burning, basically, you're burning no fuel. If right. your engine's off, you're not burning any fuel. And then you can start it back up and coast back up to um, up to speed. All right, so we, we, for an urban concept, you basically have, have a few things to make it uh, theoretically street worthy. Uh, your he headlights, turn signals, brake lights, um, we added a little extra with that fan. It gets so hot out in the starting queue that the driver sitting, or when I sit in there, it's so hot. So we decided to add a little, little uh, computer fan. Okay. Just kind of create a little current. Um, we also have our headlights, as you see over there, turn on. Windshield wiper that's required. Um, and this is our shutoff. This is what keeps the engine from uh, turning off. In a case of an emergency, I can flip that switch and click kill the engine. Okay. Uh, and the same is done with that button on the outside. Uh, turn signals right by the uh, steering wheel and a horn. Why don't you give it a blast? There you go. Well, thanks for showing me the car. That was great. Thank you.